Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. Right, today I have another Backman pre-grouping tank engine to unbox for you. Today's locomotive is a proper old-fashioned one. In real life, they were introduced way back in the 1880s, in fact, the early 1880s, so it's very much an early pre-grouping locomotive. And the tank engine is this. It is the Backman Webb Coal Tank. And as you can see, what an unusual-looking tank engine this is. I've always thought so, but I've never really been able to pinpoint what it is about these that is so unusual, because on paper, there's nothing truly out of the ordinary about these. And yet, in my opinion, they look super alien. So that is a reason why I've always really liked these tank engines. I bought mine back in 2017, so three or four years ago, for £100, and at the time of filming this video, the Backman RLP for this loco is £119.95, which actually, when you compare with other sort of Backman, modern Backman prices, it doesn't sound too unreasonable, does it? However, it doesn't end there, because if you do some shopping around, you can find these web coal tanks at the moment for incredible bargains. I think the lowest price I could find was this at the model centre, £77.96, which is obviously a considerable discount from the RRP. So yeah, I'm really interested to revisit this locomotive, find out what it's like. If memory serves me, this is one of Backman's better tank engines. It has quite a decent mechanism, if I remember correctly, but I'll be really interested to revisit this and see if it is as decent as I remember. So let's get this out, let's see what it's like and hopefully have a good time today. Here we go, the Backman Web Coal Tank. So I believe this was released back in 2017 and if I remember correctly I actually bought this when they were first released which I think was around April 2017, the first half of 2017 let's say that. So either way it's about four years ago now so I don't really remember too much about this locomotive and also back in 2017 my reviews weren't as thorough, I certainly wasn't talking about the mechanisms and that sort of thing and obviously I didn't have quite as much experience back then as I do now so I do think there's going to be lots of new ground to cover with the web coal tank today. First of all then I will show you the end of the box, show you the product code of the one I have. So it's 35-050, it's the LMWR web coal tank number 1054. LNWR plain black and it does support a next gen 18 pin decoder and I believe they also produced an LMS version of this and possibly even a BR black version of this. I think in real life at least back in the LNWR days these were freight locomotives hauling coal and such hence the name coal tank um, but I suppose the one in preservation might be doing passenger work I've never actually seen it in real life but uh, yeah I hear it is still out there and in running order last I heard. Okay let me show you the back of the box because there is a brief history on the coal tank so as always feel free to pause that and read it if you like but I will give you a little potted history in just a second. Okay well I'm really eager then to find out or rediscover rather what this web coal tank from Backman is like. Like I say my memories of this which are few they are good memories I seem to remember this was a decent model but uh, yeah I'm going to look at this with fresh eyes today and find out whether that is the case or not. So it's in the standard packaging the standard sort of blister packaging we have the paperwork here which seems to be the slightly more modern Backman paperwork. So let's take a look at this. So this is the Web Coal Tank Locomotive Owner's Manual. Let's have a quick look. A bit about accessories. It looks as though it's mostly buffer beam details, doesn't it, for the front and the back. Couplings, screw link couplings, vacuum pipes, etc. Running in, lubrication shows you the lubrication points. That's quite handy. Oh yes, this is a bit more detailed on this one, isn't it? So we've got a bit about bearing lubrication, motor bearing lubrication, that's fair enough. Body removal, it looks like. I'll draw your attention to the right hand side here. You can see the motor. Looks like a fairly standard Backman mechanism and a fairly standard Backman motor. I'll be interested to know whether it's a three or a five pole motor. However, you can see there's no flywheel fitted to that or anything. So yeah, maybe the mechanism isn't quite as good as I remember, but we'll see. DCC decoder fitting a next 18 DCC decoder. Yeah, that's all fair enough, isn't it? A bit about the warranty as well. And then what is this? It says the, oh, wow. Now I'd completely forgotten about this. I've never seen this before or since on any locomotive I've had from Backman, but this is epic. The LNWR coal tanks, it says, and it seems to be like a, a more detailed history, perhaps, than on the back of the box. You've got this beautiful photograph as well from John Hillier, it looks like. It's on the back. 
God, there's even more. Look at this, no engine number 1054, which I believe is the model we have in the box. Look at that. So much information there. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really impressed with that. Why don't they do that anymore? That would just be a great little thing to include, wouldn't it? Anyway, obviously someone at Backman was dead enthusiastic about these web coal tanks. And uh, speaking of the web coal tanks, there is the model. You can see it a little bit better now. Yeah, it's a very strange looking thing, isn't it? It looks quite a bony locomotive, doesn't it? It's not a big substantial one it's quite a slender one if anything yeah I, I do like these things they're really really cool I just that's why I'm doing this video really because I like the things right let me show you what's in the detail bag I think the instructions give us a good rough idea but there's something else in here that looks even better didn't realize didn't really notice this on the instructions so you've got etched number plates there look at that and they are really nice quality ones as well aren't they they look really good so that is a quality touch even for 120 pounds RRP that is marvelous at less than 100 in fact considerably less than 100 features like this are really quite nice aren't they very good and then yep you've got the usual plastic parts here you've got well not necessarily plastic where the couplings are concerned but you have got the screwing couplings and the vacuum pipes that appears to be all of the detail there did seem to be like a, a cylinder shown on the instructions Maybe they're fitted already, and maybe they have to be removed if you want the couplings in. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyway, let me pull this out and show this to you then. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Looks a decent one, doesn't it? Again, I don't think the boiler is die cast on this, but it certainly looks like it could be, doesn't it? Because it's got that sort of shininess to it. Again, that sort of metallic sheen is something that is consistent with quite a lot of Backman locos. And here it is. Now, I've just said, you know, the, the boiler and such is not made of metal. However, this loco is still really, really heavy, front heavy in particular, which means the weight, of course, is going to be on the driving wheels and not on that rear pony truck. Yeah, and the reason, of course, is that the running plate slash soul bar, whatever you want to call it, is actually made of metal, not just die cast metal, but thick, chunky die cast metal, because seriously, for a loco this size, the weight feels really quite decent and also the quality feels good as well. This is a slim looking loco motive but it still feels chunky in the hands which is quite decent and just look at the finish on this thing I love it even down to the sort of chrome finished handrails looks super duper smart doesn't it look there okay so these are quite interesting locomotives in real life I think there's only one preserve so you don't hear too much about them but I will just give you a bit of history in case you were interested so this design, as I said earlier on, dates back to 1881 on the LNWR, which is the London and North Western Railway, when the first of 300 coal tanks were introduced to the design of FW Webb, and they got their name coal tanks as the design was known for hauling slow freight trains. I always assumed it was because they ran on coal, but I guess thinking about it, that wouldn't really distinguish them from many other tank engines. So yeah, that was a bit stupid on my part. Anyway, the engines were produced cheaply with cast iron wheels, 17 inch cylinders, and 150 PSI boilers. They served on the western region of the United Kingdom for several years, the vast majority actually passing into LMS ownership following the grouping of 1923, hence the LMS liveried ones that Backman produced. But only 64 of them survived into the BR era following 1948, which is only about a quarter of the total number produced. However, by 1958, all members of the class had been withdrawn and only one has been preserved, which had the BR number 58926, which originally had had the number 1054 on the LNWR. So there it is then up close and personal for you, the Backman Web Coal Tank. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm reasonably impressed with this. The quality seems to be there. The detail certainly seems to be there. For less than £100 at the moment, these models seem absolutely fine. In fact, even at that RRP of around £120, even if I'd paid that for it, I don't think I'd be criticising it that strongly, to be honest, because, yeah, it's really nicely put together. So, first of all, it is heavy. I'm sticking to that story. I've put it on the scales, and I was a bit surprised it isn't more heavy than it feels, because it only weighs in at 190 grams, which is only just heavier than the E1 locomotive which is a smaller 060 tank engine and it's lighter than the Helgen 07. In fact it's the lightest 062 locomotive in my collection. However yet again in the hands it feels really quite heavy and I think the reason being is that it's just such a petite slim locomotive and of course it's also quite a lot smaller than the other 062s in my collection. So yeah I mean it's not going to be hauling a huge amount of rolling stock, it's 
is not going to be a powerhouse, but I think for its size, the pulling power ought to be adequate and the weight at the very least feels adequate. The one thing I'm not certain of with this model is whether or not it's supposed to depict 1054 in preservation or 1054 as it would have appeared back in the 1880s because there are some differences between this and the preserved example that we saw in Backman's photos. I mean, the buffers, for example, look at the buffers, just to take a mental image of those. They're not sprung or anything like that. Those buffers don't look like the buffers in the photographs provided by Backman. So did 1054 have different buffers initially in the 1800s and this model is designed to depict that and maybe it had newer, slightly safer buffers fitted in preservation? I'm not entirely sure, but as you can see, there's clearly no rivets or anything on the model as there is on the real thing. And there are a few other areas where it looks a little bit different. Uh, for example, the safety valve area. Look at that sort of plastic piece fitted to the top. That's quite a chunky piece and it actually doesn't fit to the cab which I think it should do, really, shouldn't it? Again, on the photos of the real thing, that doesn't look quite the same. So I don't think I'll dock it any points for that, because, like I say, this could well be depicting the locomotive in its earlier days. But I've studied photos, I can't find any evidence for that, so if you do know, please let me know. Anyway, let's look at the locomotive and talk a little bit about the decoration, etc., even though Backman provided the really good quality etched number plates in the detail bag, we still have these nicely tampo printed ones on the side of the tanks, which actually, if they were the only option, they would be quite serviceable, wouldn't they? They look fairly decent. The print over on the other side, on the other tank, doesn't look quite as good though. You can see whoever did it managed to make a big sort of painty mess on the sides of the tank, which isn't exactly screaming quality. But to be honest, I don't think I've really detected any other quality issues on the model at all, really. You've got the lovely lining. I don't know if lining is the right term it's like a, a rail that goes around the tanks but they're painted silver which looks fantastic and it also goes around the back of the coal bunker too with that sort of curve to it which looks fantastic another strange thing is that the coupling rods have been painted again looking at the photos that Backman provided the preserved example definitely doesn't look like that so I am leaning more towards this model trying to depict the locomotive in its original condition but again I'm not entirely sure the buffer beams are nicely decorated as well. You've got the lovely black lining around there, which is quite unusual, and you'll see that a lot with this locomotive. There are quite a few unusual things about this loco because it's so old-fashioned. I suppose a lot of the conventions were still being established at the time this was built. For instance, look underneath the smoke box door. What strange goings-on we have here. You can quite see the heads of the cylinders, and you've got the little valves which appear to be fitted to those as well, and they're recessed into the running plate, which has great holes in it. And even the lamp irons, look, they don't look like the traditional lamp irons, do they? Even around the back, look, I suppose you get a better view there. There's just a lot of things on this locomotive that I've only ever seen on this particular loco, and I think that's probably why I like it so much. I would say that some of the separately fitted parts that are supposed to be metal don't look all that good on the model. I mean, you've got this valve on the side of the smoke box here. I don't know, it's just, it's moulded okay. It's not the best moulded thing in the world, but it's been painted to look slightly orange and it certainly doesn't have the high gloss effect that the real things do. Same thing goes with the whistle up on top of the cab. Yeah, it's quite clearly made of plastic and I'm not really on board with the colour. It doesn't shine like real metal does. And that's strange because the handrail, as you can see, as I've already mentioned on the side of the boiler that really does have that proper chrome effect to it doesn't it that does shine like the real thing would so i don't know it's a bit odd that some of the metal parts do shine and do actually look like they're made of real metal and other parts are not it's a bit inconsistent isn't it but obviously i suppose these are relative nitpicks same thing goes with the reversing rod there again that appears to be painted plastic or i suppose it could be painted metal but again it doesn't have the metal finish underneath the boiler though look at that there is a representation of the valve gear under there and again on such a tiny petite model that is quite Quite an impressive feature, I would say. The smoke box door itself is interesting. Again, look, it's got an unconventional handle, which is separately fitted, by the way, nicely painted. More handrails above that area. The tops of the tanks are very nicely detailed. Look at all the rivets going on there. And the cabs I should talk about too. Look at the outside windows of the cab. The window frames there, uh, again, they would be shiny metal in real life. They do appear to be plastic, but they are carefully painted. And you've even got the little rivets on there, which look great. Inside the cab, you can see the details are definitely there. They haven't gone to the trouble of actually picking out the details on the gauges and such but there are a lot of carefully painted components inside there and you can clearly see all of the turning wheels and the regulator and even the reverser on the downside you can see that the windows are not individually glazed so again front and back you have got those ugly plastic connectors which bridge between the windows makes the interior of the cab look a bit less convincing than it might have done which is a pity given all the trouble they've gone to to pick out the cab details 
I will show you some close-ups on the wheels because there are quite a few interesting things to point out with the wheels. First of all, they are blacked out. They are made of metal, I believe. Well, they're cast like the real things would have been, but they've been painted black, which is quite interesting. Also, look at the fact that some of the gaps between some of the spokes have been filled in. Again, that's a very different way of producing counterweights, isn't it? I mean, usually you would, let me show you a wheel from another locomotive, for example, you've just got a thick piece of metal on the outer rim of the wheel. Nope, Mr. Webb took a different approach with these. They just filled in the gap between a couple of the spokes, which is very unusual. And notice also how that gap varies from wheel to wheel. And that doesn't make any sense from the outside because you'd think the counterweight should go sort of at the opposite end of the wheel to the coupling rods. But don't forget, Get, there's a lot of valve gear between the frames out of sight and that's where all the heavy lifting is done so that explains why the counterweights are in strange places the pony wheels are a bit more standard looking though aren't they as you can see none of the spokes are filled in there they are painted reasonably nicely and as you can see the axles are visible but they have been painted over as well so at least they don't shine very quickly then let me show you the back the coal in the coal bunker looks fairly decent doesn't it again that has that sort of shiny metal effect why that has a metal effect and some of the actual metal parts don't is a bit confusing but no it looks fairly decent you've got the sort of coal bunker guard as well which is nicely molded there are actual real gaps in that which looks very good indeed and then around the back you've got those strange lamp brackets as i've already mentioned you've got the separately fitted vacuum pipe there just above the buffer beam and i did i believe have pre-fitted nem couplings on this locomotive although I did take the one out of the front. Can't 100% remember now whether or not it had both of them fitted out of the box. I think it did, but it does look better without the front one fitted, in my opinion. So I don't have the front one fitted either way. Okay, so that is a taster of some of the details on this locomotive. I mean, at that price point, around £100, I mean, it is reduced quite a lot more at a few places now, but yeah, I bought mine for £100. To be honest, it's not too bad, is it? I like the die-cast running plate. I like some of the details. I'm not too sure about the accuracy of some of the details. I've looked at some of the pictures and I'm not sure, so I think they'll get the benefit of the doubt. But like I say, if you do know the answers to some of my questions, please do put them down in the comments and I'll be interested to see what those are. For now though, let's take this apart. I will show you the mechanism, then of course I'll get it down onto the track and we can give it a test. So there it is then down onto the track, ready for its test, the Backman Webb coal tank. And I just think this thing is brilliant. I mean, I love my Flying Scotsmans and my Mallards and whatnot. But there's just something to be said for these lesser known, more unusual locomotives and kudos to Backman really and everybody else that uh, makes them because it really is a refreshing change, isn't it? So the mechanism isn't the best in the world, but it's not too bad. If I show you the underside, first of all, you can see we have proper wiper pickups going to all of the driving wheels. Nothing on the rear pony though, which is a pity. The model's really nice and serviceable though because the base plate is removable. It connects with spring-loaded contacts for the pickups. So that makes your servicing an absolute joy. And as you can see, unlike many Backman locomotives, particularly from 2017 or even from pre-2017, this does have the proper metal bearings on every axle, which is really, really decent. And as you can also see, just one of the axles there is driven, which would be my preferred way of doing things. Yeah, it's nice and simple. Inside the body, the mechanism is a little bit less decent. You can see we do have a fairly chunky chassis, which is where lots of the loco weight comes from. That is decent. Less decent is the three-pole motor. This is just your basic Backman three-pole motor, and it doesn't even have a flywheel on board, which is a little bit rubbish, isn't it? Even at this price point, you want a five-pole motor with a flywheel. That's just the quality way of doing things. You can also see that the wire management is less than impressive as well. There's just wires going all over the place, and they're just sort of sellotaped onto the worm drive cover which isn't great either. There is the decoder socket though, so if you wanted to fit a next-gen decoder into there, it looks reasonably easy, it's quite accessible. The gauging is fairly good as well. I measured 14.5 millimeters back to back, that's consistent across each wheel, which is only 0.1 millimeters more than it should be as per the standard, so I think that's close enough. The front to back gauge is also within 0.1 millimeters of the standard too, so I don't have any problems with that at all. The pulling power isn't exactly impressive. I thought it would be higher actually, given its weight. I measured just 0.16 newtons that's tractive effort which isn't that good i mean i've got 040 tank engines that are more powerful than that that should only allow this to haul around 13 coaches on straight and level track which is okay i suppose yeah it's probably quite realistic but it is a little bit less than i was expecting anyway that's enough waffling about the mechanism yeah overall it's not bad it's better than some isn't it but still room for improvement i would say anyway this loco has been run in and it's actually been serviced it's been lubricated lightly in fact i do it every year so you know this is in good shape let's give it a test then see how this runs here we go i have just run this back and forwards for a little while just to make sure it's not stone cold 
But here we go. Is it started? I saw it jump. So as you can see, I mean, that is a fairly decent slow speed. It's not dreadfully slow. We've seen other locos go more slowly. And also, it's not very smooth either. Uh, there's very clear evidence of cogging there. And that will, again, be as a result of that three-port motor and the lack of flywheel. So, yeah, the slightly poor quality mechanism does actually show through quite clearly on the performance on this model. Let's try in reverse. Yeah, as you can see, inching backwards, not a particularly smooth motion, which is a pity for a freight locomotive. I mean, it would be nice if this could, you know, meet wagons nice and slowly and do really precise shunting. I suppose it does take away from that a little bit, seeing it jerk along like this. However, at the slightly higher speeds, let's show you forwards, it does become very nice and smooth. And it must be said, the loco runs smoothly at this high speed, also very quietly as well. Very consistently, I have tried this around the layout and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, no slowing down on Gordon's Hill, etc. Yeah, it seems to be a decent runner overall. It's just that slow speed isn't very good. And as I always say, a slow speed is a good gauge of the quality of a locomotive's mechanism. And while this one certainly isn't bad, then it's definitely helped by those proper bearings. We have seen better yet again on similarly priced or even cheaper locomotives. I think the Oxford N7 is a good pick, actually. That's a much more substantial 062 locomotive with a much better mechanism and yet a much smaller price tag. So this isn't ideal by any means, but it's certainly not too bad. I'm reasonably impressed with this. Reasonably, reasonably. Okay, so as a freight locomotive, I have hooked up some open wagons. I'm not sure how many, but there are quite a lot of those. Obviously, you don't want to be overdoing it with a locomotive like this, but I'll be interested to see if she can haul all of those without any wheel slip at all. So let me send her into reverse and see if she can couple okay to them. All right, let's attempt a really steady coupling. I should say on DCC, your mileage may vary. Oh, look at that. I didn't touch the controller there and it sort of lurched back and uh, smacked into the wagon. So yeah, that kind of proves what I was saying. It's difficult to be precise with this, which is a pity, but overall, oh, I suppose the fact that it hasn't coupled properly is a pity as well. Maybe, hmm. The coupling hooks seem to be clashing. Let's go a bit harder. <laughs> okay, so that makes coupling and sort of shunting around a little bit difficult as well, but it has done it now. There we are. I wonder which coupling was to blame there. That's an Oxford wagon. Usually the Backman couplings are fine. Yeah, I would say the Oxford uh, coupling there was drooping down a little bit, so I won't blame the Backman loco for that. I should say it's just going over the express points now and it is not cutting out. So obviously those wiper pickups are effective and they're doing the job properly. Right, let's speed that up a bit then and I'll show you what else is running alongside the web. Not too quickly though, I think that's more like it. Okay, so speak of the devil, on the middle line I do have, it's going to take a second to come in because it's still a way away, but it is the Oxford N7, which is a newer 0.62 tank engine. It's also much more chunky. Uh, more detailed, but also cheaper as well. So the web isn't the best value for money in the world. I think the Oxford is much better value for money, but like I keep saying, you could do worse, couldn't you? And then on the inside line, one of my favourite 062 locomotives. This one is an absolute babe. It is, of course, the E4. Oh, that made me cringe saying that, sorry. Yeah, it's the E4. Again, very nicely detailed loco. This is another Backman one. Similarly quite expensive, but uh, much more complex in its livery and detail, so I suppose that's fair enough. Anyway, see which other locomotives you can spot on the layout. There is an odd one out, although today's theme is a bit of a tricky one to spot. So, yep, let me know in the comments if you figure it out. There goes the N7, just waiting here on Gordon's Hill for the web coal tank. Okay, so on the web coal tank then, obviously the pulling power isn't that impressive, but the torque in the mechanism seems to be absolutely fine. As you can see, there was no slowing down in the motion there at all. It's competently geared, it doesn't go too fast at sort of half speed, which leads to nice realistic running and obviously, as I say, decent torque even on inclines and curves. So yeah, the performance is far from inadequate actually, isn't it? It's a decent performer and it's one that you just enjoy running. I love getting this thing running, I always have done. It's a very, very good runner overall.
So let's have some ratings for the Backman Web Coal Tank. Here they are now then. The level of detail overall has really, really impressed me. There are a lot of nice, impressive details on this. I particularly like the valve gear between the frames. You've got nicely painted cab. Yeah, I mean, the detail is really nice. I love the actual running plate as well with the cylinders on show. Yeah, there's a lot of lovely details. On the downside, though, I have knocked off a star because some of the details do look a little bit cheap and plasticky. For instance, the safety valve area, the separately fitted whistle and the other separately fitted metal parts. Yeah, they didn't look the best, did they? And there was also that issue with the cab windows not looking too good from the inside. Overall, though, not much to complain about, really, where the level of detail is concerned. Performance, similarly, it was very, very nearly perfect. At a sort of medium speed, it is the model performer, really. Really smooth, no slowing down on the curves, really nice and quiet. It's just at those slower speeds, it's not so great. There is evidence of cogging as a result of its three-pole motor. And as a freight locomotive, I would say the slow speeds are more important than the higher speeds. So it is a pity that the performance isn't a little bit better, but overall there are no major complaints. The pulling power was surprisingly small, actually, given the weight of the loco. The tractive effort of 0.16 newtons is the same as the Hatton's Andrew Barclay, which is a tiny, half the size 040 tank engine. Yeah, I was expecting perhaps a little bit more pulling power, but as you can see, it's handling the wagons I've given it today without any problems whatsoever. The mechanism I had remembered being better than it actually is, and in some places it is pretty decent for a backman. It's got the proper uh, wiper pickups, it's got the nice metal bearings on the underside. However, on the inside, the motor isn't very good. I'm not keen on the three-pole motors, and the lack of flywheel is a real pity. So I have actually knocked two stars off for that, one for the three-pole motor, another for the lack of flywheel, because both of those do actually negatively affect the performance, and I really want to try and make a stand against poor quality mechanisms. So yeah, I've been harsh there, but I think it is deserved. Quality then, I've given four star. There's a great many things to celebrate on the quality of this locomotive. The diecast running plate is fantastic. The way the model has been assembled and painted for the most part is really good, although there was a little bit of sloppiness on the paintwork. It does lose one star, again, because of the slightly shoddy mechanism. Yeah, that wasn't a five-star mechanism, unfortunately. And again, some of those plastic details would have been better quality had they been actually made of metal, or at least painted with better quality paint so that they look more like they're made of metal. Value for money, then. Now, this is the one area of the model which actually has aged quite well since 2017. So, £119.95 as the RRP, which tends to mean you get these for about £100. That's the normal retailer price. Except some retailers at the moment do have these much, much cheaper at sort of £77.96. That's what it was at the model centre. To be honest, even though there is room for improvement on this model for that price, I think you do, in general, get what you pay for. It is a decent quality model. It's a decent runner. It's nicely put together, etc., etc., nicely detailed. Yeah, I think some of Backman's more modern offerings are actually far worse value for money than this one is. So I've given it 4.5. I think for £100, there are ways that this could have been better. But overall, I'm not too disappointed at all in that. So there we go. That's an overall score of 7.76 out of 10. That is lower than the score I gave it back in 2017 although obviously we have moved on quite a long way over the last four years or so. And so into the logbook it goes. There it is, fourth just below the LMS 10,000 locomotive. Yeah, overall, it's not the best locomotive in the world, but you can do far worse, and particularly for just, just over £75, you can do much, much worse than this. Yeah, it's a decent one. I really like this one. Look at that go. I'm impressed with the torque of that. I mean, on DC, without any feedback... Oh, something's gone wrong there. You made me lose my train of thought now, Borman. Pun intended. Yeah, as I was saying, on DC, without any feedback functionality, you'd expect to see some sort of slowing down at different points in the layout, particularly as the loco gets further from the power supply. But it doesn't do that doesn't do that so even though I'm not keen on the three-pole motor without the flywheel it, it does perform well doesn't it well it performs consistently I'll say that for it So there you are then folks, imperfect as this is, 
for less than 80 pounds, I can't do any other than give this my thumbs up of approval. So if you're interested in getting a bargain, and I would say it's a bargain at less than 80 pounds, head over to TMC, the model center, and pick one up. Uh, they haven't paid me or even asked me to say this, it's just I've been buying quite a lot from them recently and they've got some good deals, so check them out if you will. Yep, this is a decent locomotive at the right price, it is absolutely fine. Shop around, see what price you can find, and if you do decide to get one, overall I don't think you'll be disappointed. Paying £100 or more, that's a slightly different story. It's not still terrible, but obviously the value for money isn't quite as good at that price point. But overall, I hope you have enjoyed looking at the web coal tank again. I certainly have done, and I think I was right to remember this as one of Bankman's more decent locomotives, because it is, it's a good one. I do like this a lot. So I'm going to, uh, well, I'll leave you to it. I'll probably keep running it for a little while, because like I say, it's a fun one to run. And I'll see you on the next video for hopefully another review or something fun. All right. Cheers then, folks. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.